And the next topic for today, this is really the core of chapter four. That's plasticity and adverb limits. And for plasticity and adverb limits, we focus specifically on cohesive soil. So basically we're talking about plasticity and adverb limits of clays. And there are three types of adverb limits, liquid, plastic, and shrinkage limit. So we're going to go over this uh, in detail in today's lecture. To understand why we define these adverb limits, first, let's look at what we have learned so far. So we talked about coarse and fine grain soils. For coarse grain soils, sands and gravels. So what we know so far, first, for this type of soil, green size and green size distribution matter. So we know their engineering properties are dictated by the green sizes and the distribution of different green sizes. In relative density, something we covered in the previous lecture, Relative density is an important piece of information for coarse green soils. So it gives us a pretty good indication of the proper engineering behavior. So that's for coarse green soils. For clays, this is a little bit different. First, for clays, green size and distribution are relatively unimportant. So what really important for clay is water. So water matters in affecting the engineering behavior of clays. And clays can be categorized by the way in which they interact with water and the range of water content over which they behave as a plastic material. So this relates to the fundamental aspect because clay particles are charged particles they interact with, again, water mo molecules very differently. They can attract water molecules and form very tight bond. So that directly affects the engineering behavior of clays. And silt, which is a fine grained soil, but this is a little special. So silts are in between clays and uh, sands and gravels. So water affects its behavior, yet there's little or no plasticity. So seeds are fine green soil with very little or no plasticity. So in today's lecture, we're going to focus on plasticity of clays. So first to see how water contents impact or affect the behavior of clays. So I'm putting here, this is a water content or moisture content axis. So water content or moisture content, they refer to the same thing. So the amount of water in, uh, in soil. And let's put the dry side on the left-hand side. So towards right, you have increasing water content. And so the, the behavior of clay, if it's on the dry side, so it's a solid-like state. So if clays are completely dry, we're very close to completely dry, it behaves like a solid material. And then as you increase the water content, as you add water to clays, it starts to behave like semi-solid. If you keep increasing water content, keep adding water, clay is going to behave like a plastic material. And finally, the extreme end, if you add a lot of water to a clay deposit, you're going to get a viscous fluid-like behavior. So that's a liquid behavior. And again, this is very different from sands and gravels. For sands and gravels, yes, water content does affect its behavior a bit, but it does not change its fundamental engineering properties. But this is very different for clays. clays if you add sufficient amount of water, it's going to look or and behave like a viscous uh, fluid. And then 
the uh, water content, the threshold value between these different states are well, what we call upper limits. So from solid to semi-solid, this is called the shrinkage limit. And then the transition from semi-solid to plastic, this is called plastic limit. The transition from plastic to liquid, this is called liquid limit. And these three together, we call them at bare limits. So basically they are the moisture content at which the state of soil changes. It changes from solid to semi-solid to plastic to liquid. So one thing I want to emphasize when we talk about at bare limits, so these three different limits, they are actually the moisture content. Moisture content or water content. So when you see a number for at bare limit, 20, 30, 50, they are actually the moisture content in percent at which soil changes its behavior. So shrinkage limit is the moisture content in percent at which the transition from solid to semi-solid. And plastic limit, again, so I want to emphasize all these limits are moisture content in percent. So you see at where limits, you know they are water content. At the point of transition from semi-solid to plastic. And the last at where limit is the liquid limit. Again, moisture content. at the point of transition from plastic to liquid. So these, these are the three adverb limits. Just keep in mind, they are all water contents. So basically they're the water contents at which soil changes behavior. So one more thing I want to add, for most natural clays, the water content, the in situ or the natural water content is usually between plastic and liquid limit. So most natural clays are plastic-like material. So most natural clays, their water content are between PL and LL. So the material itself, it's a plastic material. So we call these water content limits at bare limits because the uh, tests were originally developed by Albert Edberg, but these tests were later standardized by Carl Sasaki and Arthur Casagrande. So they standardized the original form of at bare limits for geotechnical engineering applications. So the first test is the test to determine the liquid limit of soil, and this is called the percussion cup method. On this slide, I'm showing the device you use in liquid limit test, which consists of grooving tools and this percussion cup. So in this percussion cup method, so on the right-hand side, this is basically a picture of, lab, uh, of that lab test in progress. So you have this soil paste, so that's your clay sample, with certain moisture content, and then you cut a groove at the center of the soil the sample with a standard grooving tool. And then you lift and drop that cup from a height of 10 millimeter using a crank operated cam. So let me show that device again. So you have this crank operated cam. So basically lift and drop this cup at a, from a height of 10 millimeter onto this base. As you lift and drop the cup with the soil paste, the groove is going to close. And the liquid limit is defined as the moisture content in percent required to close a distance of 12.5 millimeter groove after 25 drops. So that's the definition 
that's how you obtain liquid limit from this percussion cup test. And of course, um, it's pretty difficult to get exactly 25 blows or 25 drops to close that groove. What you do in the lab is you prepare soil sample at varying moisture contents. So you have multiple tests performed at moisture, uh, different moisture contents. And for different moisture content, you're going to obtain a different N, which is the number of blows or number of drops. And then you plot the test results as this is what we call flow curve. So plot test results as a flow curve from which you obtain the liquid limit. So let me show an example of a flow curve. Uh, if you look at this figure, you have number of blows, that's n, in log scale. And then the y-axis is the corresponding moisture content. In this figure, we have four data points. So these four dots, they correspond to four soil samples with very moisture contents. So these four soil samples you prepare, they have different moisture content. And for each moisture content, there's a corresponding N value. If the moisture content different, then it's going to take a different number of blows or drops to close that roof at the bottom. So you have these four data points, and then you fit a straight line through these four data points. That's what we call flow curve. And then to get liquid limit, by definition, liquid limit is the moisture content corresponding to N of 25. So you start from n of 25 on the x-axis, and then you read the corresponding y value from this figure. So that's the moisture content corresponding to n of 25, and that by definition is liquid limit. And this slope of this flow curve is what we call flow index. And this flow index we call I sub F. That's the slope. And by definition, the slope of this straight line on this semi-log plot is W1 minus W2. log of N2 over N1. W1, W2 are the moisture contents of two data points. You can pick any two. So uh, let's call this point N1, W1. And you can pick any points for the second point. Let's call this point N2, W2. So I can use these two points to define, to calculate the slope which is the flow index IF. So that's the liquid limit test. Again, you get this LL from this flow curve. So that's the moisture content corresponding to N of 25. And there's another way you can obtain liquid limit, and that's called the one point method. The equation for this LL equals to WN. N over 25 tangent of beta. So this is called one point because you only use one data point. So in the standard liquid limit test, you need to perform multiple tests with samples at varying moisture contents. But that's uh, for one point method, you just use one point to approximate this. And this is a semi-empirical approach. In this equation, N is number of blows for a 12.5 millimeter groove closure. Wn is the corresponding moisture content. Tangent beta is a fitting parameter. It ranges from 0.115 to 0 0.13. Another test you can use to determine liquid limit is called the foam cone uh, method. In, so the device is shown on this picture here. So in this test, so you have this soil paste. So that's your clay sample. So this liquid limit is defined as the moisture content at which a standard cone 
So this is your standard cone with apex angle of 30 and the weight of 0.78 penetrate a distance of 20 millimeter in five seconds. That's how you get liquid limit from four cone method. Again, it's very hard to get that moisture content on just one soil sample. So you prepare multiple soil samples. And you fit a straight line, then you get your uh, liquid limit from this curve here. So that's four cone method. And for plastic limit, PL, so this PL, the, this is again another test you're going to perform in the lab. So this is based on the principle that soils crumble at a water content below its plastic limit. And in this test, the plastic limit is defined as the moisture content in percent. Again, this is moisture content at which soil starts to crumble when rolled into, a th uh, into threads of 3.2 millimeter in diameter. So basically in this test, you prepare soil samples at a certain moisture content and then you roll soil paste into threads of 32 millimeter in diameter. So in the plastic limit is the moisture content in percent at which soil starts to crumble when rolled into threads of 3.2 millimeter. So that's a plastic limit. And just as liquid limit, uh, there's also the four cone method for plastic limit to determine the plastic limit. This is very similar to the liquid limit test, except the weight of the cone is slightly larger, but everything else is basically the same as the liquid limit test. So that's the four cone method. And the last edible limit is shrinkage limit. And this shrinkage limit is based on the fact that first soil gradually shrinks as it loses moisture content. So if you look at this figure here, so we have moisture content in the X axis and volume of soil in the Y axis. So let's say if we start from certain moisture content as the moisture content decreases the volume decreases. So soil shrinks as it loses moisture. And the shrinkage limit is defined as, again, the moisture content at which the volume of soil ceases to change. So at this turning point, beyond this point, the loss of moisture does not induce any change in volume. So that turning point is defined as the shrinkage limit. In the lab, so the shrinkage limit, basically, uh, if you look at this slide here, you have your soil paste in a porcelain dish. You measure the volume and the mass of soil before drying. And then you dry the soil sample, you measure the volume and the mass after drying. And then the shrinkage limit can be calculated using equation 4.15. So this is the, the mass before and after drying, and the volume before and after drying, and water density. So you can use these quantities to calculate the shrinkage limit of soil. So that's again, equation 415 in your textbook. Okay. So those are the uh, Edward limits test.